So my name is Kristen Park. I'm uh, an epilepsy doctor here at the Children's Hospital of Colorado. I've been here for about uh, 10 years. I did my uh, medical school at uh, the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota and then my pediatrics and neurology residency in Philadelphia at CHOP uh, and then my epilepsy training at uh, Children's Memorial in uh, Chicago and then moved here for my first real job you know and have been here uh, ever since. I, I work with um, specifically um, lots of neurogenetic uh, causes for epilepsy and other types of neurologic issues. Explain what chromosome 9 does. Mm -hmm. um, we're not talking about with a mutation, we're talking like its basic function. Okay. So, I mean, the ninth chromosome contains huge amounts of genetic material itself, right? It has a, a short part and a long part. Uh, and one, one's called P and the other called Q. Uh, and each of uh, those parts contains many, many, many genes that provide the instructions for our body to make lots of different proteins that do lots of different jobs within our cells and our body. So specifically, where is STXVP? Yeah, it's a specific portion of that chromosome where that length of letters codes for this particular protein, STXBP1, um, and its particular job is to um, work to help neurons send messages between each other. So um, I like to say that the brain communicates both electrically and chemically. So the nerves have electricity that comes in and out of the cells, so potassium, chloride, sodium, calcium, and all of those things flow in and out of the cell to send an electrical pulse down the, the nerve fiber. And then it gets to the end, this what's called the synapse, and that synapse communicates with another nerve cell, and that's where the chemical communication comes in. One nerve cell releases little teeny packets of neurotransmitters, and you may have heard of some of them, dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, all of those are neurotransmitters, and they're packaged in these little bubbles, and they come to the end of that cell, fuse and get released into the space between the two cells, travel across and then the second neuron picks up those neurotransmitters and then sends the message along. And so STXBP1 is responsible for forming that bubble around those neurotransmitters and then lining up with the end and releasing that packet of chemical transmission. I've heard so many different things, mosaic mutations, mm -hmm. splices, deletions, right. like can you just give us yep. a list? So any, all of us have variation, right, within our bodies and our chromosomes and our genes, right? That's why you look a little bit different than me and I have red hair and my neighbor is very good at math and other people are taller than shorter. So all of us have variation, right? And the body allows for a lot of that variation to happen naturally. That's how evolution works. But when that variation occurs in a critical spot that causes the machinery that transcribes those genes to not work properly, then it becomes more of a problem. And so that machinery is, is very tightly controlled and regulated. It's right, it's a series of letters. And each letter, each group of three letters, codes for an amino acid. And those amino acids are strung together to make a protein. And um, our genes in, in whole also are kind of like boxcars. So you have kind of a, a group of information called an exon, and then you have a linker um, where there's not so much information there, and then you have another boxcar uh, with the information and a linker. And the machinery comes along and there's a signal that says cut here and join these two boxcars together, cut here and join these two boxcars together, and then the, all of those together make the protein. So anytime there's a change in that sequence, in, in those letters, you put a G where a T should be or an A where a, 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 a C should be, um, it can cause problems. It may make a different amino acid come to that spot. That's called a missense mutation, meaning that a different, pro, a different part of the protein has been put where it shouldn't be. 
There can be a nonsense mutation, which often causes a stop. So it, that's like the protein, the machinery is going along, assembling everything, reading everything, and then it gets the code for a stop when it should have stopped down here. And so it makes too short of a protein, and the cell says, well, that's not really going to help me, and it degrades that protein. So that's a nonsense mutation. Anytime it gets the signal to cut in the wrong spot, that's called a splice mutation. That's what that process is called, splicing. Um, sometimes it will have something called a frame shift muta mutation, meaning that instead of those three letters at a time, it puts an extra letter in, which shifts everything down one letter. And then when it goes along and reads those groups of three at a time, it might again encounter a stop signal and stop short and not make a functional protein. So all of those different types of things are ways that a change in the code of the protein can cause it to not be assembled properly and not work properly. And so all of those things have been documented for STXBP1. For mosaicism, that's kind of a different set of things. Most of the time, STXBP1 mutations are what we call de novo, meaning that they happen only in the child and not in the parents. As a child is being formed, right, from an egg and a sperm, it has two sets of instructions, one from its mom, one from its dad. And then it has to divide over and over and over again and copy that genetic material over and over and over again. And you can imagine that if you were copying the encyclopedia a million times, you might put the wrong letter in the wrong spot, right? That's a de novo mutation. Sometimes those cells will go on to divide and the, and the typo in the code will happen at this stage, not at the very beginning. And so only some of the cells going forward will have that typo and the rest of the cells will have a normal genetic backdrop. That's mosaicism. And so a parent can sometimes be mosaic for an STXBP1 uh, mutation, but they don't have any symptoms because it's only in 5% of their cells or 20% of their cells. But one of those cells happens to be the, the egg or the sperm cell that then gets passed down to the child who gets it right from the start and it gets it in every 100% of the child's cells.